Good morning and welcome to my morning rant. This morning I want to take you guys to um, let's go to Luke chapter 6 and read this um, statement that Jesus made. He said, Everyone who comes to me and hears my word and acts on them, I will show you who he is like. He is like a man building a house who dug deep and laid a foundation on the rock. And when a flood occurred, the torment burst against that house and could not shake it. Why? Because it had been built well, the Bible said. This house has been built well because it was built on a solid foundation. I mean, we've all heard the story of the three little pigs and all that stuff and the quality of their home when the big bad uh, wolf showed up. And based on the quality of their home, based on the decisions that they made in order to put those things together, they suffered the consequences, if you will. So we are taking a look right here in this wonderful section of Luke chapter 6, verses 47 to 48. And it says, Everyone who comes to me and hear my word and act. So the person coming to Jesus has some responsibility. And I know that a lot of Christians today, they I call them, as I said to you before, I call them the lazy Christians, where they expect God to do everything. But we see here, according to the scripture, that we have a couple of responsibilities. One, it tells us that actually it says everyone who comes, that's the first uh, responsibility that we have to do. Um, and the second is to hear. And the third is to act. So we have three responsibilities when we are coming to God. Because he did send out the decree, the Bible tells us that decree a thing, the king will decree something, he sends out his decree. And so his decree is that come unto me, all you that labor and weary, come unto me. And you see this through the scripture. And I've talked to you guys about this before, where he sends out this decree and this call on the land, and it is amongst those are the Bible calls you the whosoever, and I was a part of those whosoever as well. Who, uh, for God so loved the world that whosoever uh, believed in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. So we are. Um, I was in that group of the whosoever. So I, as an individual, I came to God because I recognized that I needed God, and uh, tells me that I heard what He said about salvation and about my ability, and that um, I can't do it. I can't get to God with all of my my good looks and um, my good work. So um, He showed us in, in the book of Romans, and we see it through all through the scriptures. He dictates the way by which we can come to him. And I, I want to talk to you guys about this for a minute. So now here, let's picture this God, okay? Um, and he's an all-knowing God. So he knew that uh, the minute he would create the earth and the angels and stuff like that, that he set a few things in place. And so if I knew, if I was this God, if I knew that my creation that I love, the Bible says that he calls us the apple of his eye, if I knew they were going to fall and disobey me and do what they did, I would want to put some fail-safe device out there within this, this um, for them to get access to me easily. Um, uh, and I believe he did that so that the rich can get in there, the poor can get in there, the blind, the lame, everyone can get in. And I believe that in his wisdom, he knew that we were going to fall and all of these things. And so he created a venue or an avenue by which we can have access to him. And the Bible says that avenue is faith. For he says in the scriptures, uh, these uh, precious promises whereby we can partake of his divine nature. So we have access to him by him putting this thing faith so that you and I, faith is not a Christian thing, it's a human thing. Everyone uh, walks and lives by faith. Uh, it depends on where you're putting it. So we know that this particular um, tool, if you will, uh, law, you put a law in place and laws don't um, you have to, uh, in order to uh, go over a law, you have to um, implement other laws. Law of flight, as it precedes the law of gravity, and I've talked to you guys about that. And all the laws 
that are governed, uh, fate succeeds all of these laws that are here on this planet because it is fate that created it. And we talked about that as well. So we see though that this God would want to create this um, access point that we can have, we can reach him. And I believe that's what he did when he created, when he, he uh, fate was given to us because uh, choice and all those things implemented faith because once we um, disobey then we would need faith in order to believe him and even when uh, adam was here and he wasn't corrupted he still needed faith to believe what god was saying because they were meeting in the cool of the day as it says so here in luke chapter 6 you see that everyone who comes because the call is out there from uh, those who come to me i will no wise cast out jesus states so Everyone who comes to me, okay, that's the first thing we talked a little about that, and so uh, must hear. Now, let's take a little thing, uh, just stop here for a minute and have a little conversation right here. Jesus said to a couple of people while he was teaching, he said, those who have ears, let them hear. So that means that there's another set of ears that the human individual has that is accessible to that human individual. And so what is that all about? And so Jesus is teaching and he's giving, the Bible tells us that he preached and he taught the good news and the kingdom of God. And so um, we are getting into some kingdom stuff as we're talking right here. So here he is, right? And um, he tells us that you got to be hearing and so the Bible tells us that faith now, this ingredient that God puts together, okay, that God had given to us, whereby we can have access to him, it tells us that faith comes by hearing. And so I've told you guys, if you're going to try to bring faith into your life concerning something, you have to learn how to begin to listen to it. The scripture says, those who have ears, let them hear. So you have to hear, but that hearing is the piece that will take you into faith. So how do you hear? You hear what the Bible tells us with our inner man, our inner man, our subconscious, the soul of the man, where the mind is, the intellect, all of these things. So you and I have to be listening with that person right there. The scripture tells us that I hid thy words in my soul so that I may not sin against you. Or the scripture says heart, but the interpretation is soul. So I've hid your word in my soul so that I will not sin against you. And we see that the scripture talks about the redeeming of man's soul. And um, but when we began to listen with that part of us, because we have the natural ear, but Jesus said, those who have ears, let him hear. So there's a secondary hearing, and that is, I believe, your subconscious uh, mind. As you begin to listen with that person, and you are now, and the Bible tells us that faith has a, um, has a way by now coming into that situation because you have moved from hearing, from listening into hearing. And so as we are going through this call now, right? So we see that we have to hear. And then it tells us that um, once we get uh, we, we get to listen and we hear, the Bible says that faith comes at that point. And now Jesus continues and says, my words, you must hear my words and act on them. So the Bible tells us that faith without works is dead. So we once we begin and we have received the word and we hear the word and faith is there, then faith will demand that we act on it. We stand up and claim whatever it is uh, and walk into whatever it is we are walking into. And in Hebrews chapter 4, verses 2, it states, For unto us was the gospel preached, uh, that good news, that uh, this is what I'm talking about, as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. So that ingredients is faith. That's the third part that is our responsibility. And now if we do that, okay, if we decide to do that, that process that was laid out, the common whatever, let's see what God says, what Jesus says that we look like or we are when we do that. He says, I will show you whom he is like. So now He's going to um, lay out a picture as to what we look like as we are able to do one, two, and three. It says, this person, he is like a man building a house 
who dug deep and laid a foundation on the rock. So now, by following that process of the one, two, three, come here and um, act on the word of God, when you act, you're acting by faith. You are a wise builder. And so God looks at you and says, you are, you are it. You're a smart person. You're building your house. You dug deep. And so you dug deep, man. And the fact that you understand those principles, the Bible says you dig deep and you're laying your foundation for your house for whatever is precious to you, whatever is meaningful to you, uh, your house uh, is being laid on this foundation that is laid on the rock. What is the rock? The rock is the Lord Jesus, but it's also that principle of coming, that principle of hearing, and that principle of acting. When you, um, when, when you build the foundation of that stuff, tells us you're building it on the rock. And when a flood occurs, when the tough time comes, when your situation changes, when you're walking the walk of faith, the Bible says, as I, I, you guys hear me close it, the just shall live by faith and we walk by faith, not by sight. So when you are in faith and you're having this faithful life and you're walking, it doesn't say you're not going to make mistakes, but you're going to live in a faithful life. Now, um, we know that Abraham made some mistakes. We know that a bunch of people made mistakes. They all laid out in the, in the book um, so that we can read and see that these people made mistakes. But God is able to work with our mistakes. But when we do this, okay? We are uh, building our house on a foundation we have dug deep. We laid this foundation on the rock. And when the flood occurs, when the pain, when the changes on your situation comes, when sickness comes, when lack comes, when all of those conditions, when um, uh, change, it tells us that when it, the torment burst against that house and could not shake it. So now you see, when you follow those principles coming to God, as I said to you, when you're in your situation, you got to come to God. You got to come and make sure that you are going to, uh, you're coming and finding his word on your situation. You're going to come, you're going to now listen and hear the word, and then you're going to bring it into your your intellect, your soul, and you're going to deposit it there. And once he gets hold of it, and then he tells you that my word, uh, you have to act on the word of God um, concerning healing or whatever it is that you're praying and believing God for, um, you begin to act on it, you begin to institute it, is what it's basically saying, and you do that institution, um, instituting the Word of God. It tells us that faith without works is dead, so you got to do something um, with your faith. And so as you begin to utilize that process, when all the rain and the rain and the flood and the torment, you know, the torrent bursts when the sicknesses and the disease, when the, uh, everything comes against your house, against who you are. It could not shake you. Why? Because, it says, it had been well built. Come on, guys. This is some good stuff. Learn about who you are in Christ Jesus. Learn about the processes that he has put in place for you so that when you go through your stuff, if you will, your uh, flood that will come and uh, make sure that you are following these principles because the Bible says when you do that, you have dug pretty deep and you laid your foundation on the rock. And so I want to encourage you guys to come forward and dig deep, uh, get into the Word of God, get into His principles, get into His promises, those faithful and uh, super lavishly the uh, promises that he provided for us, the scriptures tells us in one translation, super lavish, really, uh, super lavish uh, gifts. That is absolutely beautiful stuff. But um, you have to uh, do exactly what the steps that are laid out here. And when you do that, the Bible says that you are digging deep. So I want to encourage you guys to go ahead and begin to dig deep in your situation. Whatever it is, I don't care what it is. The Bible lays out the plan by which we can function. And I mentioned to you, if I was this God, I, this is the type of um, feel safe I would produce. Why? Because everyone can have access to it, man. It doesn't matter. A poor man can do it. A rich man can do it. It does not matter. A child can do it. An adult. So it's on a level playing field. 
And I believe that's exactly what he did because he's made it. He tells us that it is only by faith and it's not by works because we would boast. And he knew us and said, I don't want any boasting. And I want I don't want people to come to me and tell me that they can't do it because of this and that. But every one of us can uh, walk by faith. And we do it every day in our lives. We walk by faith. You, walk, you drive by faith to go work in the morning. Trust me, you and I operate by faith all day long. It's just where you're putting it. And so I want to challenge you to come and put your faith in that process that is laid out for you and I in Luke chapter 6, verses 47 to 48. The Bible encourages us and tells us that the just shall live by faith. It says that we walk by faith and not by sight.